If you've ever been stuck in traffic, you're familiar with the red glow of brake lights. All cars have two on the sides and one in the center, but that wasn't always the case. Older vehicles only had two. What was the reason behind this change and the requirement of the third brake light? To better understand the third brake light, let's talk about the history of automotive lights. Headlights have been around since the car was invented, and their use is rather obvious. Same goes for the rear lights. Other motorists have to be able to see you at night, and the red lights don't distort your vision as much as other colors do. That's why police cars use red interior lights, so when they are turned on and off, the officer's eyes will spend less time adjusting. But maybe that's for another video. But what about turn signals? Our 1931 Ford Model A did not originally come with turn signals, although it is outfitted with a cheap retrofit kit from the 1980s. During the early years of car production, hand signals were used to indicate which way you were turning. This worked at the relatively slow speeds cars would travel, as well as traffic jams hadn't really been experienced yet. As I've said in other videos, the Model A was designed with two-track gravel roads in mind and predates the invention of the highway systems by over 20 years. The turn signal had actually been invented at this point, however. In 1928, a man named Edgar A. Walls Jr. invented a system of two flashing arrows. He went to every big auto manufacturer trying to sell his idea, but no one wanted it. Some German Model A's actually came with turn signals, but they were not made by Ford themselves. It wasn't until 1939 that a company called Buick fitted their vehicles with flashway directional signals, and thus the turn signal was officially available on a production car. These signals were only on the rear of the car in 1939, but moved to the front and gained a self-canceling mechanism in 1940. Throughout the next two decades, turn signals became more and more prominent on cars. However, in most cases they were still safety options and not required. They came standard on Buicks and Cadillacs but were optional on GM's other brands from anywhere between 7 and 10 US dollars which is about 140 to 200 dollars today in 2022. This went on for several years until in 1960 Washington state made turn signals legally required. This law was quickly adapted by all US states in the following years. So now we have headlights, taillights and turn signals. That's good, right? Well, maybe not. There's an issue with only having two brake lights. They are shared with the rear running lights and often use dual filament bulbs, so the size and location of the light was the same whether it was used for stopping or just regular driving. With the growth of cities, car ownership, and traffic jams, rear end collisions became more and more common. The solution to this problem? Science, of course. In 1974, psychologist Dr. John Vejavadsky created a small red light that could be mounted in the rear windows of cars. He then tested his new piece of tech by equipping it to 343 taxicabs in San Francisco. He then left the other 160 taxicabs in the fleet without the third brake light to use as a control group. Furthermore, the taxicab company randomly assigned drivers to their cabs, avoiding driver experience having an effect on the test. These specially fitted taxicabs roamed around San Francisco for 10 months, and their findings were rather eye-opening. Taxis with the third brake light fitted were in 60.6% fewer collisions. This ended up resulting in 61.1% fewer injuries to taxi drivers and 61.8% fewer repairs were needed to be done to these taxi cabs. This saved the taxi cab company hundreds of thousands of dollars in repairs. The National Highway Safety Administration was impressed and intrigued by the test and thus conducted one of their own, but on a larger scale. Their data was very similar, concluding that third high-mounted brake lights do in fact help with vehicle safety. So in 1986, it became official law that all passenger vehicles must be outfitted with a third brake light mounted higher than the other two brake lights. They were later required for light trucks in 1994. So if you see a vehicle with a factory third brake light, chances are it was built after 1986. 
A good example for that is the 1985 versus 1986 Mazda RX-7 seen here. As you can see, the first generation FB RX-7 does not have a third brake light. However, the very next year in 1986, when it switched to the FC, we do see the implementation of a third brake light. Light technology is always changing, even today. LEDs are now more common in automobile lighting, making them easier to see in inclement weather. In 2011, Ford pioneered the three-flash turn signal for changing lanes, making it easier and safer for motorists. But next time you see a third brake light, now you know that it was made law in the 1980s thanks to Dr. Vejavadsky and his taxicab experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little documentary. I've done two previous ones about quartz clocks and 55 mile an hour speed limits in the 1980s. If you guys would like to see any short documentaries about car or vehicle changes from the 1980s, please leave it in the comment section down below. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this short documentary and I'm excited to produce the next one. Take care guys.